Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Clausen. I'm the chair of the board of the Ontario Institute for Cancer Research. I'm uh, thrilled to be here today because we have a very big announcement uh, that's going to impact cancer patients in Ontario and beyond and going to impact the Ontario economy. We have uh, several of our partners here to speak to various aspects of this. I'm going to just say who they are and, uh, and then they'll get up and speak. So first of all, we have David O'Neill, who's the president of FASA. Beside him is... I thought that earlier applause was for me. <laughs> Laszlo Redvani, who is the President and Scientific Director at the Ontario Institute for Cancer Research. <laughs> Rima Alawar, who is the Director and Senior Principal Investigator and Head of the Direct Discovery Group at the Ontario Institute for Cancer Research. Ilsa Chernyuk, who's the Executive Chair of Triphase. And Kevin Lashuk, who's the Vice President and General Manager of Celgene Canada. So with that, I'm going to pass this over to David to start.
We spoke to 19 companies that had multiple offers, but it became obvious that the best way to impact Ontario was accessing the clinical expertise in our TriPhase partnership. TriPhase acquired Propellant, and that set the stage for this terrific partnership with Celgene. We need to build up commercialization groups like FACET and Mars Innovation so that our universities are not forced down this path to export our IP and the value it creates for our community. Next slide, please. So there are many practical benefits in addition to trying to make a breakthrough for cancer. We have jobs, skilled jobs for industry that will take that will be sustained or built in the province because of this partnership. It's going to allow us to reinvest these returns in the innovation economy and build on that momentum. We have a commitment to do the manufacturing for this clinical trial right here in Ontario. We're building global networks and increasing the commercialization momentum for the province. The high content clinical trials where Ontario patients will have access to experimental medicines are, is going to be much accelerated through this partnership instead of having it leave the country and wait for approval and come back to our patients. And in the spirit of OICR, this is about precision medicine that will improve patient outcomes. So to the Ontario government, thank you for being open for business and allowing FASTA to recycle its investment returns and partner with a world-leading cancer translational institute and an innovative pharmaceutical company. To those who question the role of nonprofits in product development and commercialization, the people of Ontario are concerned with bigger questions. How are we capitalizing on Canadians' investment in academic research and our hospitals? To our local pension funds and charitable foundations, please accept my apologies that you're missing out on the action in Ontario biotechnology. Biotech can provide the children of pensioners and donors careers right here in our community. To our partners at Mars and Mars Innovation, thank you for being collaborative Canadians and having the foresight to create triphase with us. To our universities and research hospitals, we welcome you to share in our Ontario First mission. Is your institution building incentives for local commercialization of intellectual property? One deal does not an ecosystem make, but the seedlings planted by FACET have grown to over 600 million in new investment in the province. Mars and Mars Innovation and other partners are also building momentum. Thank you, Kevin and Celgene, for being a trusted partner and a big part of this growth. We must ensure that scientific research is woven into the fabric of our society and our health system, and research must give back to the economy. Today, we're celebrating a return on our investment and one significant salvo for our family and friends battling cancer. So in this transaction, perhaps we won the Stanley Cup. But really, we're just beginning to put Ontario first, and we should celebrate this win and prepare for the next competition. I'd like to call Plaza to provide the OIC perspective. Thank you very much.
And so I think this is something to celebrate, that's something to build on. It's a powerful example also of the impact and value of the Ontario government's investment in cancer research in OICR as a driver of collaborative translational research across Ontario, linking together the best minds in cancer research and drug discovery. It's a shining example of the fact that Ontario government's investment is paying off in funding and driving OICR to cancer research across the province. And we hope to continue this and we will continue this. This new agent against WDR5, as David mentioned, promises to be a powerful new drug in our fight against a really difficult cancer, a scourge in adults and children, acute myeloid leukemia. It's one of the most difficult cancers, killing hundreds of people here in Canada, thousands worldwide. And it has also a potential due to its mechanism of action of hitting other cancers. You know, it's the tip of the iceberg of what we can do with this drug and other similar drugs like it that can target other similar proteins in, in cancer cells. In addition, another reason to celebrate is that probably probably for one of the first times is that we develop a drug, we drive a drug into the clinic, and we do the clinical trials here in Ontario and Canada. So Canadian and Ontario cancer patients get this, get this life, potentially life-saving drug first before anybody else. And that's a huge, huge thing to celebrate. At this point, I also would like to just thank everyone again who was a part of this amazing discovery of this new drug. Starting from the Structural Genomics Consortium, who has just these brilliant scientists that create all these new protein structures for thousands of proteins that really form the foundation to be able to then find these chemical probes, as we call them, to be able to fit into pockets of these proteins that can serve as new drug. Without SGC, we wouldn't be here. So I really, really would like to thank Cheryl and her team, Alan, and all the people at SGC. I also would like to thank, of course, all our drug discovery team at OICR. We're standing right here. Give it up. myself interacted with a lot of medicinal chemists when I was at Merck KGA and I can tell you we have one of the best drug discovery teams, a jewel right here in our midst, right here in Ontario, and we got to put them to work even more. They have so much <laughs> I'd like to also thank Facet and the leadership of David in putting together this rather complex deal. It wasn't an easy deal, but we did it and we pulled it together and, and, it's, a, and it's a huge achievement for FACET. <laughs> I also like to thank Triface, which is an ILSA, who will come up later, is also will introduce the Triface concept and Triface's role, which is a critical role now in driving this molecule into the clinic. And of course Celgene. Celgene for having the foresight uh, as a drug company, as a, as a large pharma company, to really see the potential here in Ontario and invest here and work with our scientists. And lastly, you know, we hope that this momentous deal here, one of the, the largest deal in biotech history uh, in Canada, will spawn excitement among all our researchers across Ontario to really think about entrepreneurship, to think about, okay, when I'm working on some new project on a new pathway in cancer, how can I drug it? How can I take it to the next level? What effect will it have on patients down the line? And I think if we can spawn this entrepreneurship spirit, unleashing the brains towards this material, will even become more powerful. And we hope that this also will attract more pharma industry interest to invest in Ontario discoveries. We, we are really poised now in Ontario to become a world leader in cancer drug development and biotech, and we just have to seize the opportunity. So I'd like to call now the 
real brains and the real um, brains behind the operation. Uh, we all love her. She's amazing. Rima Al Awar. She's the head of our OSCR's drug discovery team. And she's going to further tell you a little bit about the science about this new exciting drug and actually how it works. And, um, and again, I congratulate her and her world class discovery, drug discovery team. So, Rima, go to you. What is WDR5? Uh, WDR5 is a member of the WD repeat family of proteins that play an important, important role uh, in cells by acting as scaffolding proteins. WDR5 in particular binds to a key regulatory protein called MLL, which is our mixed lineage leukemia, to form an active gene modifying complex. Aggressive leukemias arise in both children and adults as a result of mutations in MLL. And therefore, MLL is known to play an important role in the development of the disease. In collaboration with our colleagues at SGC, led by Dr. Cheryl Erismuth, who is present in the front here, we explored the potential to disrupt the interaction between those two proteins. WDR5 and MLL with a small molecule. Behind, I guess you could see on your screen, is a high resolution X ray crystal structure generated by the SGC showing the donut like shape of WDR5 containing a central pocket where we knew MLL would normally bind. Together, we were able to identify a chemical probe we named OICR 9429 and demonstrate with this image that you see here that it clearly sits in this key pocket essential for complex formation. Thus, pro proving our initial hypothesis. Now, I would like to acknowledge our team of experienced and talented drug discovery scientists at YCR standing in the back. Our team was able to take the publicly disclosed probe and turn it into a potent drug-like molecule and demonstrate its potential to advance into preclinical evaluation. We showed that our most advanced compound engages the target, shuts down the MLL function, and kills leukemia cells. This is a first-in-class molecule in that we are the first to demonstrate that you can drug this novel and challenging interaction. We are looking forward to working with our triphase and cell gene colleagues to advance into the clinic and, and improve outcome for leukemia patients. Thank you, and I would like to now invite Elsa to the podium. Thanks, Rima. Good morning, everyone. It really is a great pleasure on behalf of <clears throat> born of Triphase and our entire team uh, to celebrate this milestone here today with our many partners and so many people in the community who have paved the road to get us to this place today. I thought in the context of Triphase a little bit of history might be helpful. Not too long after OICR occupied their space in the South Tower of Mars, we began brainstorming new approaches to deliver on its ambitious commercialization mandate. Given the global financial crisis and given our anemic biotech venture capital environment, 
And of course, given our shared goal to change the paradigm for commercialization results and scaling companies in our community. We believe that opportunity would arise as several forces started to converge. Our pipeline of assets maturing, the world learning more about our story, cost pressures mounting, and with patent cliffs looming, the need for global pharmaceutical companies to reach back into the vault of discovery at our leading academic institutions. We wanted to be ready, we wanted to be strategic, and we wanted to make sure that more value stayed here. And so the concept of triphase was born. Establishing a locally owned and managed operated company with a global view. Intentionally designed as a bridge between excellent science and patience. Expertly and rapidly moving promising drug oncology drug targets through the clinical proof of concept stage. A gap where science often stalls, where VC companies often die, and where if you get it right, significant value can be created. <coughs> and we wanted to do all this in a manner that would bring substantial financial returns back into the community for reinvestment and commercialization and repeat this process again and again to start that positive flywheel effect. So we set out to test the concept, find suitable assets for development, and secure a financial and strategic partner. And we were extremely fortunate that Celgene was prepared to explore this new model with us. In 2016, Four years after that initial partnership was launched, Triphase's first asset, Merizumab, a novel brain-penetrant uh, proteasome inhibitor, was acquired by Celgene, and it is now in a pivotal global phase three study for newly diagnosed glioma. Our second active program involves a novel site-specific antibody drug conjugate targeting CD22. The preclinical data is extremely promising, and it is just entering a phase one clinical study for patients with relapsed and or refractory B cell lymphoma. And I'm happy to say that earlier this month, we opened and activated the clinical trial site at Princess Margaret Hospital. Which brings us to today's announcement. Since the very early days, of course, of course, we wanted to use Triphase to develop drug candidates developed and discovered here in our own labs, in the labs of our partners. And as a result, we've looked at many assets from across Ontario over the last six, seven years. But given the specific model of Triphase, many of them are still too early, as we knew would be the case. And we came very close on a couple of occasions. But it was worth the wait. As you've heard, the WDR5 program is based on truly exceptional world-leading science. The unique targeting approach provides the very rare opportunity for a first-in-class cancer therapy in leukemia and beyond. And it was discovered right here. Plus, Triphase is now ready to launch this to use its expertise, its experience, its wide range of relationships, and its trusted partnership with Celgene to bring this program to clinical proof of concept over the next three years. We're optimistic, we're excited, and we're deeply committed to delivering on the full potential of this program. So on behalf of everyone at Triphase, I'd like to thank and congratulate every one of our partners on reaching this milestone but the OICR Drug Discovery Team in particular. Thank you to the province of Ontario for your continued support of this group. Today is only one example of why this matters. And a special thank you to our collaborators at Celgene, many of whom are still stuck in Newark, for your ongoing 
support and for your very significant commitment to the WDR5 program development. We simply could not have selected a better partner. And we owe a great thanks to Kevin Lashuk, who has supported the development of Triphase <clears throat> since inception. And I must also mention Dr. Angus Grant, who was Triphase's champion and steward for so many years inside Celgene. We would not be here today without him. A few other people need to be mentioned. At Triphase, a special thanks to Dr. Henry Lohman, Grant Gibson, our CFO, and Dr. Ann McLaren, <clears throat> who is here from California and leads the WDR5 program on behalf of Triphase. I'm also sure Tom Hudson and Mo Tricka will raise a glass to all of us from their new portrait at me. And we also remember Jeff Courtney today, who began his work with OICR on Triphase, served as a director of the company for many years, and is missed by all of us. And speaking for personally for a moment, three things stand out for me about today. I am especially delighted that this milestone was made possible by the drug discovery team at OICR under Rima's leadership. I have admired her as a scientist and as a human for a very long time. Triface team has done over the last six, seven years. They are a uniquely capable, effective, no-nonsense group of people, fueled by the quest to improve the lives of cancer patients. And it's been such a pleasure working with them. And finally, for all of us, I'm absolutely inspired by the power of this superb collaboration. What it symbolizes how it's worked, and what it has now made possible for our community and for cancer patients. We've certainly come a long way, but there's no question we're just at the beginning. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you very much for the organizers for inviting me to attend and present this morning. It's always very, very difficult to follow Ilsa and then to hear about the tremendous achievements and I'll, I'll just spend a few moments talking a little bit about Celgene. Um, the, our organization has been started really only 20, 25 years ago, a very young organization on the, on the life sciences uh, timeline. And really, as Elsa mentioned, the last seven years have been framed by a tremendous collaboration with the Triphase Group, born here uh, out of Ontario. The partnership with FACET, with OICR, with Mars Innovation has been exemplary. And I think, as a Canadian, uh, when I started my journey in life sciences 25 years ago, if you'd asked me and told me that I was going to be at a podium in a a center of excellence in the heart of Toronto, representing an advancement of a new anti-leukemic. I would have said you were crazy. And to be here is quite remarkable. Uh, I started my career 25 years ago, and for those of you who've been in the area of leukemia research, seven and three has been the mainstay of treatment for patients with AML, and it really is still today the standard which I guess is both a good thing but also a bad thing because it means that so much research is still needed in order to advance the care of these patients. So certainly the hope and the promise for WDR5 is great and I can tell you that Celgene would be thrilled to be making those milestone payments and paying in excess of a billion dollars because we mean that that hope and promise have become a reality. So we're looking forward to the future of what that looks like. On behalf of the 8,000 employees at Celgene globally, uh, we're incredibly proud of the relationship and the partnership that was established with the Triphase team. Um, it's something remarkable that the organization has realized as a gem to be able to, in 
invest and work with a partner is great. It's Triphase, OICR, Facet, Mars Innovation in Canada. We're proud to continue to support that. I also mentioned Marizumib in the Phase 3 program. That is something very, very exciting because it's a disease area, again, where there's been almost nothing to advance care. So we're crossing our fingers that the Phase 3 will weed out very, very positively. And we know that the cycle of innovation starts with investment and that that investment fuels additional research and investment investment in, in growth and science and then along with that comes economic development. So we're very proud, I'm very proud as a Canadian to be a small, small part of it. Um, congratulations to the OICR team, congratulations to FACET, congratulations thus far to the Triphase team. Um, very proud to be a partner to it. Thank you very much. So, uh, just a couple of things I wanted to say, uh, summing this up. The Ontario Institute for Cancer Research was created, I guess, about 12 years ago now, uh, long before I was involved with it. And its purpose has been consistently to try and work with partners to create benefit for patients and also to create economic benefit for the province of Ontario through the commercialization of uh, uh, diagnostics or therapies uh, associated with the treatment of cancer. This value that we create can only be done through partnership and has been mentioned I mean, the partners that are on the stage there are other partners that have been mentioned and there's a whole ecosystem of, of cancer research within this province and trying to pull people together and get them to move things forward I want to uh, thank one group again that was necessary to make this possible OICR has been funded by the Government of Ontario for the last 12 years. And they've also facilitated our ability to create FACET, which is a unique organization, which we have to transfer funds to and uh, back and forth. And we have to work with the government for all of these transfers. And I must say, the government has been very supportive in helping us create the structure that we have that's enabled us to do the work that we've done. And I, I particularly want to mention the ministry staff. Some, some of them are no longer working with us. Uh, we've had a lot of new staff, but all the way through, the ministry staff have been so helpful to us in moving the work of OICR forward. So maybe you can just give a bit of applause to the government. I do want to also thank you all for coming out today. I, I, uh, we were wondering, uh, looking last night, as to whether we were just going to be speaking to ourselves this morning. But we do appreciate you all being here. And I can just suggest that you watch the progress we make, not just on this particular molecule, but, but on future ones as well. Thank you very much.